Okay, I'm Karma and I'm going to talk to you today about how to do encaustic paintings. And encaustic means to burn in. And what that means is that we put a layer of hot beeswax, which is mixed with Damar resin that hardens it a little bit. We put it on layers of uh, your platform. And what I usually use for my platform is these very inexpensive pieces of birch plywood that you can get at Home Depot or a hardware store, or a lumber yard, I mean, and have them cut it into pieces. So what I've done with this piece already is I've prepared it with something called encaustic gesso. And that just seals the wood and you can make all different colored colors of encaustic gesso. This happens to be white and when you do that, when you put layers of wax over it, it has kind of a luminosity, which is nice. So, I'm going to show you the technique of putting your first layers of clear wax on a piece of wood. And what we do to start out with is we warm up the piece of wood slightly with a heat gun just like this. It doesn't have to be hot or anything, just kind of warm. Okay, and then take your melted wax here and you make some nice uh, smooth layer in one direction. And the wax, as you might be able to see, um, it starts to get molten very quickly, just like candle wax does. All right, now what we do is we turn it and we put another layer of wax going the other direction. Just like that. put a third layer of wax on it before we start to paint any kind of a picture on it. So again we'll turn it. Drip, let some of the wax drip off. There we go. Now we have three layers. So it's going to give us a, a platform that we can now take the heat gun to it. And the reason for heating wax is that usually you, you actually heat up each layer of wax because that helps it to adhere to the bottom layer. While we're waiting a moment for that to cool just slightly, I want to mention that safety is very, diff very important with, um, when you're using hot wax. So as you might see, I have an exhaust fan behind me with the window open a little bit, even though there's snow outside and it's cool. And then there's another window open on the other side here to uh, create a, a circular draft so that we're not breathing in the, the hot wax because that can be toxic if it gets too hot. Okay, we are ready now. We have a nice smooth surface and we're gonna going to start to heat this wax. And if we want a really nice smooth surface on this little six by six piece of plywood, the best way to do it is to sort of hold it mm, almost parallel to the, to the piece of wood. And you want to heat it just until you can see it. It gets a little, mm, I don't know what you call it, maybe just a little it starts to look a little watery, and that means that it's heated enough and you can go on to another spot. When you're doing this, you might think about the fact that it's a bit of a meditative task. You can just kind of meditate on it and 
watch each of the bubbles as they rise disappear and get really nice and smooth. That is if you want a, a nice smooth surface, and sometimes you don't. Okay, we've just about gotten that done. It looks almost completely smooth. Hmm, hardly any bubbles flat. Oh, wow. It looks like a just a shimmery little lake. Okay, that's it. So, one of the wonderful things about working with encaustic wax is that you can add almost anything to the wax. So, you could add an image. I just found this image today, I think, in the New Yorker of a very, oops, a very, uh, Mm, kind of Rubenesque little figure. And when the wax is still slightly, um, still a bit soft, you can just put that right on there if you want to. Pat it down a little bit. And then in order to get it to adhere, you can put a thin layer of wax over this. The wax acts a bit like, um, you know, like a paste or glue. So we're going to put this over this little Rubenesque figure here. There she is. Now she's nicely covered and embedded there and not likely to come off. Okay, and then we have to burn it in because that's what encaustic is about. We're going to burn her in. Now I sometimes use a torch for certain kinds of materials, but I only use that outside uh, for safety reasons. So I'm doing the same thing here. I'm just heating it up until it, it gets to be look a little bit wet and shiny. And then I know that it's, I burned it enough. And there she is. She's safely burned in to the wax. There she is. Now, over this we could put anything you could possibly, you could possibly think about. Now, as I'm looking at this piece so far, I see something interesting. It's a bit of a surprise. And this is what happens often when we work with encaustic. It's a very fluid way of working, and we do get surprises. So what I find my surprise about her is that, since it's a mag cut from a magazine article, we can see the printing from the back of the article, which is often something that we want to have because it's very easy to create layers in our encaustic pictures. And sometimes we want to have um, words or phrases, um, and they're coming up from behind, so that's fine. Now, I want to mention that we can put almost anything on our encaustic pictures. And this is some mm, glittery stuff, glitter dust, <laughs> that you can get at Michael's or one of those places. And you can just tap a little bit on your picture if you want to. Move it about. And make her come to life with glitters. Um, now, I just want to show you something that I started to do earlier on bare wood. This has no wax on it yet. What I did was, today I went outside in the snow and I made these little, I, I found these sticks, just regular old sticks, and they're a little bit wet because um, it snowed out. 
and I whittled them d down and made them into little paint sticks. And this is India ink that I'm using. And so I made this picture on the bare surface, and I'm going to cover it with wax. But I discovered how much fun it is to draw with these. So we can actually draw a picture over her, over this little figure that I that I appended to the wax. And I, I actually have all different sizes of um, these, excuse me. By the way, I found whittling to be really fun in case anybody wants to try it. So here's another one. And sometimes we use what kind of looks like graffiti or nonsense images that we can put onto our wax and let it dry and then we could we could put wax over that layer to make sure that this is going to be intact. Now, I'm going to open this bag and see what kinds of goodies I find here. Um, as I said, you can put anything you want on your wax pictures. And this is a bag of pieces of wax that I used a few years ago when I was in a class with Laura Moriarty. Um, so these are pieces of wax that I uh, scraped up from something I was working on and I just kept them. So what you can do with pieces of wax is kind of interesting, I'll show you. So say I'm going to use this piece here and I'm going to, I'm going to sort of put it right here under her neck and then we'll heat it up and see what happens. See, it starts to melt and become part of this picture. And we might want a close-up of this now because this is starting to be something a little different from what we started with. Right? So you can put layers and layers of things on this to the point of really obscuring your original image. What else is in this bag? Ah. These things. These things are fun. This is gold leaf, I think and it really sticks to your fingers. But you can take out a little bit of gold leaf and just sort of press it into your picture. Press it in there, yeah, like that. And then we'll heat it up, see what happens. Some of it might blow away. To show you a few more goodies that you could put on your pictures. This is uh, eggshells. Eggshells, you can use eggshells, you can use tar, you can use shellac, you can use joint compound, you can use pieces of cloth that you dip into your wax. Almost anything Light on it? No. 